in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hollywood loves Mary Magdalene. Whenever they make a movie about Jesus, they always get some major babe to play Mary Magdalene. For Hollywood, Mary Magdalene brings sex appeal to the Gospels. Former prostitute, healed by Jesus, now smitten with him. It's good box office. Not so good for being accurate to the Gospel text, however. But you really can't blame Hollywood alone. Early on, not very long after the formation of the written Gospels, imaginative male bishops and preachers and theologians combined stories about various women in the Gospels. They took that nameless woman who anointed the feet of Jesus with her tears and then dried them with her hair. And they took that nameless woman caught in adultery that they were going to stone, and Jesus got her free. They took those stories about Jesus hanging out with scandalous outcasts, tax collectors, sinners, prostitutes. They took other gospel stories about women named Mary, or in Hebrew, Miriam, which was a very common name at the time. And they combined all this into a mishmash about Mary Magdalene. So she became the woman in red, the scandalous temptress who hangs around Jesus, the scandalous woman with a past now reformed. It's very sexy, but it's not accurate. If we stick to the gospel texts, Mary Magdalene is not a prostitute. She is a woman Jesus had healed, and then she became a follower. She and some others used their own resources to support the growing Jesus movement. She was a witness at the cross, and she was at the empty tomb. She was the first to have a personal encounter with the risen Christ on Easter morning. And he sent her to the male apostles with the news that he had risen. That makes her the apostle to the apostles. Maybe not as sexy, but much more exciting, I think. That's the Mary Magdalene of the Gospels. And I love the Mary Magdalene of the Gospels. She is a companion on my way. Why? Because she is the patron saint of all of us who at some time have to watch the suffering of someone we love. Think about that day of darkness, that day of the crucifixion. The male friends of Jesus had fled. Judas betrayed him. Peter denied him. And the rest of the guys ran away. Who is at the cross? According to Matthew and Mark and Luke, it was the women. Mary Magdalene. Mary, the mother of James and of Joseph. Salome. Susanna. Some other women. That took courage, and that took love. Mary and the others could do nothing for Jesus there on the cross. It was as if their hands and feet were stuck, too. They were helpless as companions of Jesus in his sufferings. But they showed up. They were there. They could see him, and he could see them. And I believe their presence meant something to him in the midst of his sufferings. That's what companionship means. That is how love works. Mary Magdalene was there with Jesus while he was in pain. She said nothing, she could do nothing, but she was there with him. That to me makes her the patron saint of all of us who at some time have to watch the suffering of someone we love. My best seminary buddy died at age 37 in Atlanta, Georgia. I was there for his last three days in the hospital, day and night. By then he was past hearing me, we could not have a conversation. But I watched him, I was with him, and he knew 
I was there. Mary Magdalene would understand. My daughter has suffered all her life from disability. One Sunday at coffee hour in my Pennsylvania church, she walked up to me and interrupted a conversation I was having because she wanted to ask me a question. She was maybe nine or 10 years old at the time. She had just been at a Special Olympics swim program and maybe for the first time she caught on and noticed the sort of kids that she was always with in these programs. And she walked up to me and she asked me with a very straight, flat face, typical of people with autism, Daddy, am I handicapped? Is that sad? Now I know she was heartbroken and there was not a thing I could do to make her feel better. Mary Magdalene would understand. Last year, my wife went through surgery and chemotherapy for cancer. There was nothing I could do except show up with her for all the procedures and hold her hand. I could not fix a thing. Thankfully, she is doing great. Woman's going to outlive me with all her running and vegetarianism and all that stuff. But I remember my feeling of helplessness. And my heart goes out to every spouse or family member or friend that has to watch someone they love go through a medical crisis. You feel hollowed out, you feel empty, and you feel powerless. Mary Magdalene would understand. A lot of us belong to a club, and I call, call this club the Society of Mary Magdalene. It doesn't mean we're sex symbols, that's for sure. It doesn't mean we're people of scandal. We are ordinary people. <coughs> See the suffering of people we love and can do nothing about it. That other person is suffering. And just watching <coughs> hurts us. But our patron saint is also our example. We can do what Mary did. We can show up. We can be there. We can offer our care, if not healing, or special wisdom. So, make the phone call. Write the note, send the card, show up, visit, be there. Over the years I've had people tell me, you know, I really hate hospitals, they creep me out, or I can't deal with a funeral home, I never know what to say. You know what? Nobody likes hospitals. Nobody likes funeral homes. My wife says, put your big girl panties on and deal with it. <laughs> you may not have wise words. Besides, wise words may not help much anyway. But what you have is enough. What you have is one standard issue, human heart. And that's what it takes. So show up. Be there. Mary Magdalene did it. So can you. Amen. Amen.